Okay, so now that we have a little bit of background, we can start to get into some cases. So this is a case I did pretty early um, after finishing training. This is a three month old baby who basically rolled off of um, her crib. So it was a fall, you know, probably more than three feet. And right off the bat, we could see nice skull here. All of a sudden we see this large hyperdense area. So this is most consistent with blood. And if you look more closely, you know, on previous images, if you go back to the, the start, you see the ventricles, you know, there's one on each side. You can see where the middle is very nicely. If we go back to this patient, you see the ventricles have been pushed away from the bleed. So the bleed is exerting what's called mass effect, where the brain is really a sponge. If you, if you exert some pressure, that sponge gets squashed and it pushes structures over. So we see evidence of mass effect here. And we also see evidence of midline shift. I mean, if we drew a line in the middle of the skull, we'd see that the structures are pushed away from the pathology. So mass effect, midline shift, these are terms that you'll hear radiologists use very frequently. And this is simply a diagram showing the same thing, that there's a collection of blood here. It's most likely an epidural, epi meaning above and dura, the covering of the brain. So this bleeding occurring outside the dura. It usually occurs in the setting of skull fractures and commonly the middle meningeal artery is an artery that, that could be affected. And this diagram does a nice job, I think, of showing some of the, the manifestations of that mass effect. So for instance, there's a part of the temporal lobe structure called the uncus. You see that it's getting pushed over. You see the evidence of shift, the ventricles. This one is effaced, meaning it's, it's you know being compressed. And then this structure, the cingulate, is being pushed over as well. And, and subfalcine refers to below the fox. The fox is simply a, a dural separation from the right and left side. So the brain is being shifted over. So with all that shift, as a neurosurgeon, your goal is to relieve that pressure. So this patient was taken to the operating room. An incision was made over the area of hemorrhage. The bone was removed and simply the blood was, was taken out and any bleeding points were coagulated. So you can see now on the post-operative scan, you know, the midline shift is it's much less dramatic. The structures are nearly midline and the ventricles look symmetric again. So there's less mass effect. You can actually make out normal gyri and sulci. So gyri are the kind of mountains, sulci are the valleys, and the brain is set up that way to increase the surface area of the cortex. This is just a coronal view, again, showing that the blood has been removed. There's a little bit of a fluid, what we'd call a hygroma or a collection of CSF that likely will resolve on its own over time. So that's an example of a craniotomy for an epidural hematoma. Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.